Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamualaikum everybody. Welcome back to General Chemistry. You are with Madam Ruby. Let's start lesson 2 and we're going to learn about relative atomic mass, AR, relative molecular mass, MR, functions of five main chambers of mass spectrometer and also we are going to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element from its mass spectrum. Now, firstly, we're going to look at the definition of relative atomic mass. The symbol is A subscript R. It's the mass of one atom of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So basically, we want to know the mass of an atom and then we compare it with one twelfth of carbon-12. If we have a compound, we're going to find the relative molecular mass because it is going to be calculated by adding up the relative atomic masses of all the atoms present in that molecule. So, if we look at the mass of proton, it's actually 1.0074 U. U is the unit for atomic mass. And then um, neutron has the mass 1.0089 U. If we add together proton and neutron, this is what we have or called nuclear number. Therefore, the relative atomic mass or AR of an element is actually considered to be the same as its nuclear number. So let me introduce to you here a typical mass spectrometer that we have in the physical chemistry uh, laboratory. Okay, what is the function of mass spectrometer? Firstly, to determine the relative atomic mass, to determine the relative molecular mass, and to determine the types of isotope found naturally for that particular element. We also can recognize the structure of a compound in an unknown sample. Okay, next, let's look at the cross-section of a mass spectrometer. This is the vaporization chamber and then the sample will move to ionization chamber. This is part, this part is called acceleration chamber. And this banded thing is called magnetic field. The samples is then detected at the ion detector. And then the analysis data will be recorded as mass spectrum. Again, this is the uh, cross-section of mass spectrometer. I will talk about the function of each chamber now. The sample will be vaporized into gas in vaporization chamber here. And then the sample will be turned into positive ion when it is bombarded with high energy electrons at the ionization chamber. Here in acceleration chamber, it will be accelerated. So the speeding sample is going to go through the magnetic field here and it is deflected and separated according to their mass over charge ratio whereby it will be detected at the ion detector. So we are going to look now at the main components of mass spectrometer. Uh, this is the text. You can find this in your page 21. At the vaporization chamber, the sample will be vaporized. In ionization chamber, the gaseous sample will be bombarded by high energy electron to produce positive ions. It will be accelerated at the acceleration chamber and at magnetic field, the speeding positive ions 
are going to be separated and deflected according to their mass over charge ratio. The positive ion with small mass over charge ratio are going to deflect it the most, but the ions with large mass over charge ratio are going to be deflected least. So the heavier the positive ions are, the more difficult it is to be deflected. Next, we are going to look at the mass spectrum, which is going to come out at the ion detector. Uh, so the number of ions and the types of isotopes is going to be recorded here. This is an example of the mass spectrum for xenon. You can see 124, 126, 128, 129, and so on. This is another image for mass spectrometer where you can see that magnesium ion 2 plus is detected here whereby the lightest particle is deflected the most and the heaviest particle will be deflected the least. Magnesium 2 plus 26 is going to be deflected on the far right in this figure. Next, we are going to uh, explain a little bit about what happened in the magnetic field. Strong magnetic field will make the ion follow a curve path instead of moving it in a straight line. So ion with small amount of mass will curve the most. So it will be here. But when it is heavy, it will be difficult to curve it. So there you go. Um, the um, simplified version of the mass spectrometer components and its function which you can write in page 22. Beware of the red underlined words because they give you points, important points in the exam. So now let's calculate the relative atomic mass from mass spectrum. This is a general statistical formula, which I'm sure you have learned before. This Greek symbol is a sigma, which means sum up. So you sum up the frequency. Uh, frequency here refers to the relative abundance or percentage, abundance of an isotope of the element. And you multiply it by the mass. Okay, so the total number of function multiplied, sorry, not function, um, frequency of percentage abundant multiplied by mass divided by the sum of the, uh, the uh, frequency or the total uh, percentage. It can be 100, it can be 25. So we need to find that out and we'll sh look that the calculation after this. The unit is atomic mass unit or U. And this is another formula which you have to show in your answer uh, because it gave you one specific mark on its own. So relative atomic mass is the average atomic mass which we calculated from this formula up here and then it has the unit U. But if we compare it with another uh, mass from carbon, 112 times 12 of carbon, it has the same unit U, so the uh, unit will be crossed out, so relative atomic mass would not have a unit. For example, in your page 23, we have an example 1.3 regarding the relative atomic mass for nitrogen. It is calculated to be 14.0037. How do we get this? Okay. We get this from the graph whereby the percentage abundance for nitrogen 14 is 99.63 and the percentage abundance of nitrogen 15 is 0.37. We insert all the 
um, numbers from the graph into the statistical formula here and then we will get the answer 14.0037u but we need to also do the comparison with carbon 12 and we're going to cross out the unit u here to get the relative atomic mass another example is on rubidium mm, i like this element so you're going to find what isotopes are there here, what are the percentage, and calculate the relative atomic mass. The isotopes are rubidium-85 and rubidium-87. It is shown here in the x-axis of the graph. And what is the percentage abundance? You have to calculate uh, the average for each of the isotopes for rubidium 85 the relative abundance is 18 divided by the total abundance which is 25 so you got 72 percent for rubidium 85 and 80 28 percent for rubidium 87 uh, next we want to calculate the relative atomic mass of rubidium so you put into the statistical formula to get the average atomic mass we will get 85.56 u we want to cross out the unit because we want to compare it with carbon so we got 85.56 these two steps of calculation will give you three marks in total okay shown here is the naturally occurring elements that are unevenly distributed in nature this is table 2 shows the elements in our body and then uh, earth distribution this is uh, from the soil okay so that's about it for our lesson 2 thank you for listening stay tuned for the next one bye assalamu alaikum